I'm Justin Hayek, investment advisor with PI Financial. Join me on a ride with today's top CEOs. Hear the stories of their greatest achievements and failures. Get the inside on their secrets to investing and the latest on their next big deal. This is Car Ride Confessions of a CEO. Frank, the other Frank, Frank Joostra, approached you and told you a little bit about Hiver, I guess specifically Genesis Mining. What exactly attracted you to You know, it's fortuitous. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, I love Frankie and uh, he, he, we would call and reflect on ideas all the time and mm-hmm. uh, he was originally in college playing a, the trumpet, he was a musician and uh, he's a creative mind. Uh, and so he called me and, and what was fortuitous is that he called me, you know, looking for more uh, insight into this uh, category and why do I like it what the risks are etc right and I had just f- finished doing a fair bit of research on the because I was trying to launch an ETF in that space and all I would do is drive into dead ends right. Bitcoin being uh, what the internet what the uh, email was to ignite the growth and the interest in the internet um, Bitcoin is igniting the interest in blockchain technology Frank calls me. <laughs> And, uh, and Frank, and I said, yeah, Frank, I'm interested because you know, I've been doing some research in the space and my, my godson uh, has made a ton of money and is really pushing me. And so I'm learning mm-hmm. and I've been going to conferences and uh, I spent like four hours uh, looking for that video that could explain blockchain in a minute. Right. And that's right. what I showed yesterday. Right. And right. then I found the other one, another four hours that was, they give you that one minute on Bitcoin that people could quickly grasp the concept. Um, and so I'd already been there, and when he said that, and then I said, okay, and who's Genesis Mining? And quickly did some research in Genesis Mining, uh, and said, I'm very interested. And with that, I said, I wanna go over and do my due diligence. And I went over to Zug and drove from Zug all the way to uh, Munich and uh, mm-hmm. uh, got to meet the principals, mm-hmm. um, the founders of the company, uh, and it's just mind-boggling that you have four, three guys that in four years have, have had no investors and they have a multi-billion dollar company. Amazing. Uh, they have 1.5 million people growing at 50,000 a day, 1.5 million people paying them, and it's, it's probably close like to $1,000. So we're talking about a $1.5 billion company, private, no, no other investors. And the CEO is 28 years old, and he runs his empire on his smartphone. <laughs> he just impressive. got an assistant because <laughs> the, they doubled, yeah. and uh, he just predominantly does it. So if you ever want to watch it, you go to um, Marco Streng, like strong with an E, mm-hmm. and uh, TEDx, and you'll see his interview. I heard you're a marathon runner. I've done 18 of them. Holy smokes, what's your best time? Finish. Just finish. All I care is finish. Yeah, I guess. It, it, it's, 26 as, miles as later. As my friend uh, G. McBurney says, it's like sex. All you care about is you finish. Right, yeah. <laughs> so are, are you at, you know, avidly training or is it just one of those no, things no. where because you run, you think, okay, I'll, well, I'll give be, it a shot? Uh, you know, when I, t- I started this, this process when I turned 40, okay. that uh, I want to, in my travels, is to make it a goal to, when I'm going to Europe, to be able to run a marathon. And so right. I've had just beautiful experiences running Paris, running London, running um, Rome, mm-hmm. um, uh, running New York several times. Uh, they're, just, they're just very special experiences. One thing that I've noticed is that you're very active on social media. I mean, you're constantly posting on, on Twitter and such. And that's generally not the case for a lot of people in we'll call it the baby boomer generation. So why is that, why is that important to you? Why do you maintain that level of activity on social media? Well, I think that um, it also keeps me engaged. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing this research, and and so people have asked before, well, what do you like and why do you like it? What do you like and why do you like it? And so if I see an interesting article, see a chart, etc., then I post it because right. I found it interesting. Right. And uh, and that's all part of that whole social n- network. Right. Uh, so th- I think from that end, um, it's just sharing. Recently, U.S. Global's launched two ETFs. We did. Right. 
but you guys have been known more for mutual funds in the past. Correct. Um, why the change? What was it about, you know? Well, mutual funds are being Uberized by ETFs in America, more right. so than Canada. Um, there's a push by the regulatory world that cheaper is better. I always like to tease about it. None of them buy their clothes at Walmart, but they right. want everyone else to in our business. Sure. Um, but I, I think that uh, the, the markets are changing and it's recognizing, and I put a lot of research into it, 8,000 hours of analyzing gold stocks. What goes up, what goes down, why, how do they function? Yeah. And trying to identify the, the precursors that quant funds use now, because they're 60% of trading. Uh, they may be only short-term trades, but they buy stocks that have this DNA. Right. That, and you can see it if you do this proper data mining. And a classic would be the revenue per share. Give me the cheapest re revenue per share uh, for the each quarter rebalance. And that's mean reversion. And you'll perform index by wide margin. Now give me the 10 stocks where the year over year per share revenue is growing. Give me mm -hmm. just the best growth. So even if gold's falling, they're growing better than its peers. Right. And they're, and they're not getting crushed. You just buy those names, buy those names, buy those names. 10 rebounds, 10. It far outperform. Hmm. So revenue per share is an important factor in uh, quants making decisions. Right. So we embedded that into a, an ETF with technology. It's also, they call it smart beta, mm -hmm. but we spent thousands of hours of data mining to understand with, with the airlines through a boom and a bust, bankruptcy, how, which ones evolved, what were the factors. And, and so we discovered that certain factors that work well in the US and Canada don't work in Europe. Oh, okay. So you can't say, you know, just low PE ratios are ubiquitous, they're always gonna work. And so you have to create a bit of a complexity in your model that captures those differences. Okay. And we were able to take the Jets ETF, which most of these type of global ETFs cost a thousand dollars every time you have a new million dollars going into them. It's a thousand dollars to what they call a create. Mm -hmm. Well, ours is three hundred dollars because we really applied this thought process of a quant model and discipline. Okay. And and the interesting part is done exactly what we said it would do. And as far outperformed the New York Stock Exchange Global uh, Airlines ETF, uh, and, and I'm thrilled about it. So the gold one, uh, which we launched, has done exactly the same. It's far outperformed the GDXJ. And when we had this big sell-off in Barrick, we didn't own it. El Dorado, we didn't own it. Wait, the ticker symbols on those two ETFs you mentioned? Um, well, Jets? Jets is easy. One. And the one in, in Toronto is called Go Go. You are, as I said, you know, travel around the world attending conferences as a keynote speaker. What's the next conference you'll be attending in Vancouver as a keynote speaker? Cambridge. There we go. And I'll be there in January. January 21st, 22nd, Vancouver Convention Center. Thank you for your time. Frank, thank you for your time. Appreciate Look forward it. to seeing you uh, in uh, January. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm definitely going to be attending the conference. Always a good turnout, too. Yes, very good. Awesome. Take care, my friend. <laughs>